Okay, so after step 16, you should have something like this. You have here is the front piece. And you have this inside sewn down. But you do not have that sides open. So since this is together, we can kind of bring this down. And you have this whole piece here. So we're going to now bring this one to this one at right sides together and notches. And here too at the crotch with the holes together, pin it all the way in the back. So an easier way to do it is if you grab, so this is like the front piece, right? Like this. If you move this back, the forward, you grab this side and the other, and you kind of just like, do it like that, <laughs> where you have your front piece here, right here, where it's already sewn together, flat, and now you pin this whole thing in place. So this is how it looks right now after stitching it, and I've noticed that when you get to the crotch here, let's see if we could focus, it actually aligns pretty well with this seam we did earlier, I think it was the one where we did one inch away. So it met right on it, so it was like a pretty simple finish. So we can see it right here as well. And then if we open this up, here's where all four meet, which is really nice right here. Don't pay attention to this one, but this one and then this line, this is where all four corners meet, which is really nice. Step 18 says to stitch side seams. So <clears throat> here's our front piece because we have the pocket here. Let's start with this side. Put it flat. And then Sorry, it's a little messy. <laughs> okay. So here's the other side. We're going to pin it right sides together. All the way down. It's worth noting that if it looks like this, like it's not flat on the side where you sewed it, it's okay see like right now you can see that if you lay it flat it has all this don't sew it like this keep it right sides to right side because we this is where our leg goes we need that leg room so we're gonna do all of that even up here where it has the black piece we're also going to pin this and sew it I should have a notch here, I believe. I did not have a notch here, but I'm guessing the mouse will match this notch here. So we're going to do that on both sides. This step did not specify the seam allowance, so I'm just, I've moved my needle instead of the center to one over. Make sure to back stitch. I'm going to actually be skipping steps 19 to 22 because they make you do this, these ties. And I've done this pattern before and those ties are completely only for decoration so I'm gonna just be using ribbon and I would use a bigger size ribbon but I don't have I'm, this is just what I have so if you want to do this though it seems pretty straightforward just making like a long square or rectangle and so I'm gonna be doing step 23 instead to help with that process so here I have 9 is right here and this is number 10. I applied the interfacing as you can see and I marked the dots. I did not have enough interfacing here but it's okay. So it says apply interfacing to right tab on outside based ends of tie ends over large dots having raw edges even. So what it wants you to do, I should have cut my ribbon out first huh? So what I want you to do is on the outside, so here's number 10, 
And also looking at the picture, make sure you have your pieces like this. So that the notches are going this way, each notch, see? Okay, let me cut this piece of ribbon. I'm just going to guess. I can always cut it off later. Okay, so it says apply interfacing to, oh, I already said that, on outside based ends of tie over large dots, having raw edges even. So here's my tie and here's my large dot. So I'm going to put, you see this dot here, and we're going to, um, if you had a bigger one, you would make this right here with, meet this together, and over this large dot, you're going to pin this in place and baste it just like this. Okay, so step 24 says, stitch ends of casing eight two tabs, leaving an opening between small dots. <clears throat> So, it's going to be a little confusing, but looking at the picture, you have 8, which is the this one at the bottom, and you have on the right side, number 9, because you know how, you see how number 9 is smaller piece than number 10. So we're going to pin number 9 to the right side of the fabric. I may just be over explaining this because my fabric is right sides to like it's all one color so if you had an image it would be easier to detect but here we see that the ribbon is on the bottom even though this is on top this is backwards this is like flipped see how my button holds on this side so pay no attention to my markings here but the ribbon is supposed to be on the bottom, matching notches. And another way to make sure is that this notch on number 8 is at the bottom. So then we're going to stitch. I'll just flip it over so you can see. We're going to stitch all the way. And then between these two dots, we are going to leave it open. So let me just do these dots again on the right side or on the other side so that way you won't get confused so we have this one we're gonna mark X here because this is not the right one and this is like this because there's only one piece so it was kind of difficult to Cut my interfacing after deciding oh, no this is better okay so we're gonna start here at the top stitch we are gonna back stitch we well, don't have to but I'm gonna back stitch and then we're gonna open it and start here again and stitch all the way to the bottom make sure that your ribbon is out of the way it's just going forward. You can also see here that this is where the ribbon's supposed to go. Here is the left side of number eight, and here you can see that I did have the right dots on this side. So we're going to just pin that in place. Double, double check and make sure that your number 10 is on the left side and your number 9 is on the right side and that your ribbon is towards the bottom and your opening, your two dots opening is towards the top. 5 eighths of an inch. And then we are going to start it and backstitch. Once we get to this dot at the top, we are going to backstitch. And then we're going to lift it up and move this right here. You can cut that piece if you want since we backstitch, but 
is ending. So then we're going to start the next one. And that's it then. Finish this step, we're now going to press this seam open. And in the instructions, it shows that the this inside is going to be pressed open towards the middle. So I'm actually going to cut this piece here since we backstitched just the thread. Okay. So we're going to open, let me see if I can move my camera at a better angle. So we're going to open this piece right here, just like this. And we are now going to press it. Sorry if this is not the best angle. But we are going to do this. Do you see it? Be careful with your inner facing when you are ironing right here. And you can also flip it over to make sure that you are ironing it open all the way nicely. Press under unnot press a half inch on <clears throat> unnotched edge. So let me see if I can zoom out. So here I have my piece and I already opened it up here. So this side is the notched edge, this side is unnotched. So I'm gonna flip it over to the wrong side and we're gonna fold it down half an inch and iron it. And we're gonna do that for the whole piece. With right sides together, pin casing two pants, matching centers, placing inner small dots at side seams, and remaining small dots at tab seams. So we're going to be pinning here right sides to right sides. So let's start off with the back, because we have two notches right here, which match the notches at this one right here. So we're going to make sure that the ironed part is at the bottom here. In my case, you can see it at the top of the screen. Be we want this facing like that, the bottom of it, because that is right sides, two right sides. So now we're going to pin, starting from pinning here, and we're going to pin all around the waistband now to the PJs so this is a good starting point so what they meant by doing matching dots so here I have a dot this dot supposedly is supposed to go right here so what you can do is just kind of place a pin there to match it and then put another pin right over it and that way you'll know that this is right at the center side seam and here you can just stretch it out just a little bit to pin the rest of this. And let's move on to the front now that we're here. So there's also a notch right here and a notch here. So we can align these notches together like so. Hopefully you can see on my camera. What I'm also kind of doing is aligning the casing to the end of my fabric here. So in this case, I would also have to pull it just a little bit 
so that way you can get it to be flat. It does say um, tabs extend 5 eighths of an inch beyond opening edges so don't be worried that this goes further. That's exactly what is supposed to be happening. Make sure that when you are pinning this piece you have your tab or your yeah, right, your pull tab or whatever out of the way so you won't be stitching this on accident like right here you won't be stitching over it you have to pull it out of the way and for this case I'm gonna be sewing 5 eighths of an inch because the instructions say to cut your seam to a quarter inch so to be honest I don't really know but also let's consider that you want to do it at the dots as you can see in the picture the seam is going over the dots and we know that the dot is at 5 eighths of an inch so make sure you backstitch at the beginning and at the end and just kind of double check that your fabric is well and flat if it's a little flimsy just stretch it as you go all right so now I'm gonna trim my seam quarter inch using my scissors and hopefully this is how it looks for you don't be alarmed by this it has a reason it will give you a nice finish when we get there but for now just cut your seam quarter inch all the way step 27 says <clears throat> press seam toward casing pressing casing out so here I already, I already pressed it off camera you're gonna press it so that way your fabric goes this way you do that all around I was gonna say if you have some like little darts here don't be too worried about them because when you add the elastic it's gonna change it up a little bit for you step 28 says fold casing with right sides together stitch across ends of tabs so here's one tab we're gonna fold it over just like this and then I'm gonna pin it I think two pins is enough we are going to stitch from this end right here all the way across you kind of just have to guess where this is at you can like put a ruler here and draw a line to make sure you have a straight line but all the, all the way to finish this step 28 you have to trim the seam and the corner so here's the corner we're going to trim like a triangle very close to the edge as possible without getting that piece same with this one and then we are going to trim this seam as well okay so step 29 says turns end of casing right side out and press so here's one side we're gonna flip it on over and I'm gonna use my point turner to make sure I have that nice edge And I wanted to point out earlier I was being really specific about which side was on which and as you see here side 9 which has the button goes on top of side 10 so that is why I really wanted to make sure that we were putting number 9 on one side and number 10 on the other so now I'm gonna go and press this and I'm gonna press the whole thing again so that way it's kind of like this flat all the way around and making sure you're passing this seam line where you had originally put in the thing so this will always go on top of it just like that and while we do that we're gonna 
replace the pins, but we're going to put it on the outside. So we're going to turn it, press it, and then put a pin right here to hold it in place. So to finish this step, we're now going to sew on top of this all the way through and we pinned it so that you're always going to catch the seam at the bottom underneath too, which will give you a nice finish. This is how it looks. There are pieces here where my my thing is really far off compared to here, but if you see, it still grabs the end, so it's not really a big deal, but this is how you should have it. You can take these off now if you want. This base is to cheer for your pulls, but now we're going to do the elastic. So number 30 says, cut the elastic guide. Here is my guide. So you just bring your elastic. So I know to cut here. But I'm actually going to put this on myself first and see if it's enough. I might not cut it the same exact length of the guide. I think I might cut it shorter, but we'll see. Okay, so now to insert the elastic, I have here a safety pin. And I'm just going to put it almost at the end. And then here's our opening. It might be kind of hard to put in first, but you just fold it if you can and insert it. So now that I have made my elastic come to the end, I can feel it right here. Just pull it a little bit more. I want to be sure. Just kind of positioning it so that it's right here. I'm going to pin this. And I should have pinned to make sure that this isn't in the way, but it's okay. And then before I sew anything, I want to take this out, which make it might be hard out actually. Let me see. Let me repin my elastic then. It might be easier to pin this way too. Let me just kind of get this thing out. I think my, uh, okay. my hole was a little bit small this time around, but it's okay. So my elastic is right here. I'm going to pin it again. This side. And we're going to sew a straight, a straight line right here to catch that elastic. So now here's the elastic end, and I I backstitch several times on both sides, so that way it's pretty secure. I don't know why they did it this way. I would prefer a zigzag stitch, but you can see it, so that might be why. And then this one, we're going to close out later. But now, since my elastic did not fit here very really well, I'm going to not pull it all the way through and do the same thing with this side and be careful when you pull through make sure you have something here at the end just in case it goes in way too much which I don't think will happen because this elastic is thick and for at least in my case my hole is not that big but you can never be too safe. So an easy way to put the elastic in I found is to put the garment on and slowly with your you know, as your body gets bigger, your, the elastic will pull through by itself. Here at the end, I did mess up a bit, as you can see, but I already stitched well enough here. And so, I believe if I take the seam off, 
um, it won't do any, I won't have any problems because I believe the elastic is right here so you can feel it, or I can feel it. Step 31 says to slip stitch opening in the casing close. So here's the casing and I have a needle and a thread. What we're going to do is, see how this is, you, you're going to put your needle right at the, kind of like, right where it's folded. And it might be hard because you have, yeah, it's like a few layers, so. And you could have done it so that this doesn't show, but... Okay, so then you're going to go to the other side, right in front of it. And the same thing, you're going to make it, make pass your needle right on the, the ledge, the pressed edge right there that we see here. Step 32 is to make the buttonhole at the right tab in the marking. So here I have my markings here and this is where I have my marking for the button which is why earlier I was really really stressing the point the fact that we wanted a specific section on the a specific piece on the left and a specific piece on the right The next step is to sew button to tab under buttonhole. So I tried this on before so I know that this placement of the button that the pattern gave me fits fine. I would recommend you to do the same and then if it doesn't fit, you can just move the button a little bit over. So now it's be around here. We're going to do this for all the other buttons we have left. Here I'm removing the basting stitch we did for the ribbon and also wanted to say take the time to look around your piece to just kind of snip all the excess threads you might have. You can do this at the end, but I'm doing it right now. And I wanted to just show that. For our last step, it wants you to press up the hem and then fold it over a quarter inch. So first I'm doing the quarter inch, or about, so now that I have that ironed or pressed, I'm going to turn it again.
could pin this piece if you like, but um, since we ironed it, I'm just going to leave it like this. It seems to lay flat on its own. And I took off this piece of my sewing machine so that way you could fit the legs. And we're going to stitch close to this hem up here, not down here. Just a straight stitch all around, back stitch at the beginning and then at the end. When you get to the sides, it might be a little bit bumpy, but that's okay, just, that, just because there's multiple layers. And I also pressed this end to one side only. You could open it if you'd like, but I usually like to press it to one side. And so, this is how it would look on the outside. You want to press it close so that way you catch that open end at the bottom. You do this on both sides of course and you're done. This is the final result of this pattern. Here I, oh, I forgot to button the buttons up but you can see that the holes are open, pockets, and here's the bottom hem. the back. This is just an example of how they would look if you had it all the same color. Like I mentioned before in my other video, I only did two colors because I did not have enough. 